Nick. I'm Sasha. And this has been the Chaos Queen. So I'm so dead. <laughs> so guys, I wanna <laughs> before we even start, welcome. Let me let I, me upgrade. Well, yeah, we got you know, I don't I don't listen to hip hop, but we got uh we got upgrade. <laughs> don't start. <laughs> don't start. It's still February and you can't like this. I can. But no, listen. It's, guys. Listen, listen. Uh, so we we have we made a decision about two three weeks back, four yeah. four weeks. We said, "Wow, we are artists, yeah, and, and we're creators. Yeah. We are not organized in the least." So when and you say we made a decision, it's more like we admitted a thing to ourselves. Admitted, admitted. We, open up. we faced the mirror and said, yeah. "Girl, you still can't figure out Google Calendar." We don't know what's happening. We don't know what's happening. We there, and, and luckily for us, there is an artist who knows Google Calendar, knows all, of, knows knows how to work a stream yard, and her name is Brittany Bigelow, and she's our she's yeah. our producer, and she has come in and and saved the day. Uh, so all the graphics that you're seeing, the the the, the kind of fresh look. This is all Brittany. She has Beyonce style. Like she has taken us to Red Lobster. Like she, she has taken us to Red Lobster. She has upgraded us. It is really like, look at this. Look at these graphics. I mean, I know, like, whatever. I'm, in, I'm like, I'm floored. Anyway, it's we're so very much. excited. Did you see that video? Like, are you kidding me? We've got. Look at that. Look at the new opening. Come on, see the fans know. They've been around. They're like, yeah, it was about time. It's time, you guys. You guys were real janky for a minute. Now, Listen, now we're back. We started with me playing songs from my iPhone. And we look did. at us now. We have a full video. Anyway, welcome everyone to the Chaos Twins. We're so happy to be here. So happy. So happy. So, so nice to see your face. And so nice to be on a consistent schedule, right? That's the other yeah. thing too. To be able to be like, yeah, this is every Wednesday. It's on YouTube. It's on Facebook. It's, it's Facebook. not every Wednesday. Don't listen to Nick. Every Again, other. don't listen to the Chaos yeah, Twins. Don't, don't listen to us. <laughs> Question we're, everything we say. Really do. <laughs> we don't know what we're talking about. But also, we have... We, we have a ticker. Look at that. There's a ticker I, that just happened. You see it? Like a reminder, reminding people to subscribe. It's amazing. I can't. It's, it's I a, feel, really, are you overwhelmed? I am overwhelmed. Like I didn't have a Valentine's this year. This year you know, I'm single. I'm out here just like doing it or whatever. But like this feels really flattering and just very fancy. Yes, I feel like I'm being, I'm swooning. I'm swooning. Oh it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful. We're, we're really, really happy about it. We're super happy about it. And we're very thankful to Brittany, our, our producer, uh, for, for joining us on this journey. So, you know, we're, we're going forward and, uh, you know, and Sasha, please, please chime in. I think, I think there's definitely going to be more room for first like for cool segments for for cool yeah. things you know really yeah really structuring this is something that that is not People just should get a, ready for some surprises yeah like a lot yeah. of like weird things weird do you mean like peanut they're butter they're not gonna be good surprises like i'm no. not promising good i don't but i don't judge things like yeah. i just accept them as they are so i don't think i'll ever feel safe ever. you shouldn't and and i yeah. want to be clear about that that that's not something that i do is feel safe Nick often asks for a safe word in meetings or I just do. in conversation he and i will yeah. self-tape together and sometimes i'll ask for a safe word and we give that we give him safe words it's yeah, just yeah. that they don't mean anything like they don't trigger anything yeah nothing fact, happens when he uses the safe word it's just you know, you know i don't I would, know i would love to put that forth uh you know before we get started on the show i'd love to put that forth as a possibility just just to make our social media thing do you know what i mean yeah tweet at us possible safe words that i can try to get them to listen. <laughs> you know, go on at the Chaos Twins on, on Instagram, Twitter, find us and, and be like, hey, try this. Will they listen to you if this is the safe word? Let's hashtag like, Nick's not safe. Hashtag Nick's not safe. Let's find the safe word together because I would love to find it. I'd love to find it. I'd and love to that, see what people come up with. I love it. I love it. And in that in that topic, I mean, while we're talking about safe, uh, we let's do our first segment, uh, Secure the Perimeter. Securing the Perimeter. Here we go. Let's, Look at that perimeter check, baby. 
how do you hey. do it? How, how do you secure your perimeter of the world is chaos? Yes, it is. How do you maintain your boundaries against social media trolls and NYC water bugs as well as systemic racism and glaring socioeconomic uh, inequalities exasperated by the political <laughs> pandemic? What took you by surprise this week? How did you do it? Guys, one day I'm going to get that on one breath. How did you do it? So, Sasha, how did you secure your Yeah, I was just telling you about this. So, um, I was, you know, it's a pandemic. It's a coin shortage. I don't know if we've really talked about that this on the show, but there's a coin shortage. And um, if you're an artist or an actor or somebody who maybe relied on like live events and large gatherings of people for your income, um, you're definitely experiencing a corn shortage. Corn, corn, a corn shortage. A corn, a corn, shortage. Sh a corn shortage. Get them corns. No corn. no I'm corn. missing my corns. I'm hungry, y'all. I need some corn. Um. So I have been tracking down checks, okay? So we get residual checks as actors. We get, um, we get like, you know, but we change locations or you change. I mean, I've been in Georgia. I've been in New York. Um, you're, you've been out in California, Nick. You're back in New York. Like we just all over the place. Sometimes checks get sent to the wrong place. And so I, I was like, what happens to my money? Like, I know I have money out there. Give it back to me. Yeah. So yeah. Um, I Googled, like, what happens to uncashed checks? And it turns out it's illegal for anyone to keep money that is, you know, supposed to be yours. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, I was like, well, where does it go? And most places, like a lot of uh, SAG after does a great job of tracking people down. Most companies, they will try to track you down because they have to legally, they have to get you the, mo the money to you. But yep. what they can do if they've done this for what a certain amount of time, usually over a period of years, but maybe shorter if they're just like, we don't know where she is. Like just, they have to give it over to the state. Mm. So you can go to the state website, like the state comp comptroller, comptroller, you know, that thing that you vote for and you're like, what do they do? And you, you know, you should research it right and no. go, and and bubble it in bubble in the best person for the job but this like this office you can basically enter your name and anything that is associated with your name will come up and it will have an address and if you can prove that you are associated with this name address and then like your social security number or the tax id number associated with that payment mm. they will get it to you They'll say, Quick here it fast. Is. They'll say, hey, listen, we love it. If you could just prove that, you know, you live at this address now, we'll send it right there. So I, money, I is a, money is a coming. It's probably 25 cents. And I'm not going to lie. You know, I get those fine. checks, but that's, it's coming. That's 25 more cents than you had yesterday. I also want to say I have a vision of you. And if somebody is an artist in the room, please make <laughs> this up and tweet it at us. I just, as you said, you're hunting down money. I just had a vision of you just in a sleuth's hat with a magnifying glass. Just wandering, wandering the banks. And a pipe. And a pipe. <laughs> just like, ooh, I'm going to find it. I'm going to find it. You know what I mean? Like, that's. Okay, that's uh, see, I heard there's some checks here for uh, Sasha Hutchings here. That's anybody, what I uh, anybody heard of a Sasha Hutchings? Yeah, I would do that. That's fun. Maybe we should just do that for fun. Maybe we should just. I don't even think it's for fun. I just think it's for life. Do we just do that? Yeah. <laughs> just make that face. I Next time you're on the street, just make that face and, and, and get a pipe out. Wait, Celeste just found out Microsoft owes me fifty dollars since there's, 2006. There's something like I gotta look up the number, but it's like it might be mil it's millions, if not billions, of dollars that are unclaimed funds for like Americans. And I mean, if now more than ever. <laughs> what I love about that, I love the idea that at a time when ain't nobody getting paid. <laughs> There's money that we were supposed to be getting paid. I'm Googling this right now because I need Please this Google number. It. Please tell yeah. us how you secured your perimeter this week, Nick. As you Google this thing. Uh, so my, my perimeter secure, securement was actually like quite a, quite a literal one. Um, I said no. I said no to things. I said no. I said no, I will not do that. Uh, I, I, I defined boundaries for myself. I am a, a constant yes man. Um, yeah. in the way that if somebody asks me to do something, I will do it. And <clears throat> you, Brittany, uh, Alex, my co-host on Little Justice, you all can attest to the fact that my brain uh, has been all over the place uh, as of late because there's there's actually too much going on, and there's too much and there's too much going on that is out of the kindness of my heart, meaning free. yeah. There's too much yeah. going on that is that is free ninety nine. And and here's the thing: I will always, I will always help out another artist because I that's what we do. We're not we're not in this for the money. However, right now, like I do have I have a full time job. Like professorship has become a full time job. 
Um, yeah. I'm also, I don't know why. I still can't believe they're trusting you with the futures of young children, oh, it's, but fine. It's really not good. It's super not, it's super not good. Um, <laughs> it's not, it's really, no, I'm being so, it's so not smart. For <laughs> they're the not, kids. the kids are not okay. <laughs> the kids are not safe. The kids are not safe at all. Um, <laughs> But but you know, it, professorship's a real thing. And then I'm also I got I got you know, my scripts. I got pitches that are coming yeah. up. I got like a lot of things happening. And I have chaos wins and I have little justice. And those are the things that are like my work. Yeah. And then there's other things that are happening, that are very nice. But but I, I, all of a sudden, you know, it's it, uh, there's that Jimmy Kimmel quote about you know he, I'm paraphrasing here, but it's like you know it's it's really fun to say yes to things. Right, because mm -hmm. it, it makes you feel like you have agency. Yes, I am a professor. I'm, I'm a professor at <laughs> NYU. Uh, I teach at NYU Tisch and NYU Steinhardt. Very weird, very strange, not a good idea. Not a good idea. Um, but, but right, it's easy to say yes to things, easy to say yes to things, and then all of a sudden, you know, until that day comes, and you actually have to do that thing. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah. I, I think, the biggest thing for me is like, oh yeah, I've, I've said yes to a lot. Yeah. Um, so now I'm just trying to, uh, to really, <laughs> To really pull that. I don't like that. I don't like that. See, this is the other problem, guys, is that now we're not in charge of this. So Brittany is Brittany is able to do whatever it's she wants. So good. It's so and Br good. Brittany is more chaotic than we are. So there's like there's a lot that's gonna happen now that I'm very not comfortable with. Um, oh, very cool. Come on, come on, Tish. Come on, please. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm 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 a I'm a professor there, but um, but yeah, just saying. Fantastic. No, yeah, we love that. We love that. Come on, Tish. Uh, saying no to things, being being very particular, you know, being particular with your time, protecting your yeah. time. I think. How is, is that? How is um? Do, how long have you been doing that? Like, when was this decision, and have you noticed a difference? So yes, um, market difference. So I started. I really started being specific about this. I'd say in the past two three weeks. And what? And here's here's what I will say. People. Uh, there's some people who who are like like my favorite. It's it's actually a great way. This is it's something to know just for everyone. Great way to tell who are like your friends, and who is not because there's the people who are like cool. Oh, totally, I hear you. Yes, absolutely. Or like when they ask you to do something, like even if you're not backing mm -hmm. out of something, when you're asked to do something, you're like, no, and they're like, oh, totally cool. And then there's the people who don't hear no. Yeah. I want to say that again. There's then there's the people who don't hear your no, and they push, and mm -hmm. and they and they and they try to they try to you know uh, emo emotional manipulation is the word that comes to mind. Con mm -hmm. Trying to control your narrative, trying to whether it's a guilt or whether whatever it is, and I don't want that energy in my life. So I've yeah. had to. Be, I, what's changed is I've I've had to I've actually seen a lot of people who I I love dearly, but I've had to be like, hey, actually, I said no, and mm -hmm. it's no. And I just want to say here for the record that I really pushed you for that stars password. Um, you did. I really wanted to watch that new show, and I'm I'm hearing the no now. I'm hearing you know it now, what? Nick. Well, I I I'm, and I'm glad about that because you didn't hear the no when uh, I told you I didn't want to watch Bridgerton. You <laughs> didn't hear that no. So I'm glad that the that was no. Not me. That was Sarah, and she's your wife, nope. and she doesn't have to hear no. <laughs> no, no, Sarah. Sarah doesn't have to hear no. That's what I'm saying. Sarah asked me to watch Bridgerton. I'll watch Bridgerton. You asked me to watch Bridgerton. I'm not watching Bridgerton. So I gotta you know ask I mean? Sarah to ask you to watch. I got it. I forgot the chain of command. I'll get. I'll get it. Circle. I'll go. I'll go Full the right circle. way. I'll go the right That's way. Right. Yeah. That's right. That's um, right. My, my, my final follow up question. <laughs> yes, growth. <laughs> yes, my growth. final follow up question is: um, Are you offering your no services to a friend? Because I have a few people I need you to make a phone call to. Um, that yeah. my agent yeah, yeah. is not contractually obligated to speak to on my behalf. <laughs> I love that. I think that's really great. And uh, you just, how about this? Put it in the private chat. Yeah. Put in the private chat, those deets, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll circle back with you. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I, love using, I love using corporate terms. Let's touch I'll base. circle back. Let's touch base about that. We'll let's touch let's base. Check, just bringing this in. to the top of your email, your inbox again. I just want to ping um, you. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. Let's. <laughs> <laughs> not that the perimeters are secure. They're so secure. <laughs> They're not. They're not uh, we're going to bring in one of our really, really, really great friends, incredible uh, colleagues, somebody we've both known for years and we're really excited to have on the show. She's had an incredible year 
uh, herself. Um, she's a pretty shit person, honestly. She really is. But Not we good. love her a lot. <laughs> she doesn't have a lot of friends either. So if you nope. guys could just be really nice to her. And she's looking. <laughs> We're going to bring on uh, Miss Vosti Mum Point, Broadway's Vosti Mum Point. Hello. Hello. Hi. What oh is my that? God. You know, oh, Professor Tubits. Oh my oh god. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god. You learned so much for me today. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Already it's a problem. Already it's a problem. I was like literally writing down bits. I was like, okay, so he said this. I can't wait. I can't wait. I can't wait. Okay, but first we have a bit for you. Do you have your guitar, Vasti? I do. Do you have your ukulele? My ukulele. I love that you think I know how to play the ukulele. <laughs> Sasha has seen me play the guitar so many times. And she was like, she's like, it's a ukulele, right? And I was like, what are you talking about? It's a about? full guitar. It's a full like thing. she's seen my guitar in like dressing rooms. She's seen me carried on my back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna talk about Vasti's <laughs> friends later, which is Vasti's newest business. Uh it's incredible yeah. uh, programming for children. It's really blown up and it's such an expression of you. Um, and but we're going to introduce, let you introduce yourself basically, and then have you play a little bit of a name game. Uh, Vasti at the top of her shows, her uh, with the children, she'll sort of uh, do a name game with them and read off their names. So we'd love for you to introduce yourself, and then <laughs> I'm going to hold up cards for names, so you'll sort of introduce us, and then um, it's just going to get a little weird, just a little bit weird. But if you could. Uh, let the folks know and welcome them to, welcome them to your cool. show. This song, first of all, I don't know why I wrote this song because I'm terrible spelling. So at the beginning of every show, I'm dripping in sweat and I spell everyone's name. <laughs> It'll be like Tiffany and I'll be like T, I, like I don't even, I forget. A Mason's you do friend. really well. I think you do really good and the kids love it. They like well, wait for their name to be it's called. It's Mason, like I have like a judgmental husband on the side going. <laughs> it's not the name, that's what not that what it says. And I'm like, how is that supposed to help me? I love it. I love it. <laughs> so I'm singing my name? Your name's first, and then I'll start giving you names. I'll hold okay, them up. They'll, they'll two, come up. As long as I can do two bit at one time, then I'll do this. <laughs> okay, so great. Not, okay, I'm not going to say anything. I'm showing up. <laughs> v A S T H Y. Fast. Nope, that's wrong. V A S T H Y. Fast is my name. <laughs> v A S T H Y. Sasha. S A S H A. Sasha is my name. Hi, Sasha. S A S H A. Sasha is my name. I like to sing and play all day. Sasha is my name. Nick, got it. It's me. W O B I T. Nick is my name. T W O B I T. Nick is my name. I like to sing and play all day. Nick Tubit is my name. Mm -hmm. Rocky, Rocky's that's musical. <laughs> B-K-Y, Rocky is my name. Tony Wars, R-O-C-K-Y, Rocky is my name. Ring Girls, I like <laughs> to sing and play all day. Rocky is my name. What, what does that say? say? Hold it up. Ow. <laughs> She's like. <laughs> <laughs> That's so Allo, weird. okay. I don't like that. Allo is my name. Yes, Allo. A L O E. Allo is my name. No ashiness. I like. 
moisturize all day. Aloe keeps us young and inks my name. Cleo! Hi, Cleo. How are you today, Cleo? I'm great! I'm great! C-L-E-O. Cleo is my name. Miss Cleo! C Cleo is my name. Tell me now. To sing for your free tarot reading. Cleo and Tupin and Sasha and Aloe and all the things are my name. Whoa, Cleophis. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? <laughs> Why are you doing this to me? C L E O P H U S. Cleophis is my Cleophis name. C L E O P H U S. Cleophis is my name. I like to sing and play all day. Cleophis is my name. Here's the last Good one. Good lord. Okay. I'm gonna need a <laughs> How are we making this work? How is this gonna happen? I'm very, I'm very concerned. It's gonna happen by the power of your name. Yeah. <clears throat> B-L-C-K-G-I-R-M-A-G-C-I-C. B-L-C-K-G-I-R-L-M-A-G-I-C. Black Magic Girl is my name. <laughs> <laughs> to sing and play all day. Black Magic Girl is our day. Black Girl Magic, Black Girl Magic, Black Girl Magic, Black Girl Magic, Black Girl Magic. Black Girl Magic. Black Girl Magic. Yeah. Oh my God. So good, Bossy. We love it. <laughs> I I fit in like three Nick bits in there too. I feel really proud. You did. Of you really did. I you was really gonna try to them. scribble it down, and then I was like, "She's got it. It's fine." She's already <laughs> got it. It's already in there. That's, so tell that's... us about two bit. <sighs> um, <laughs> so my Nick and I did Yoshimi Battles the Pink Robots together. It was one of the coolest musicals ever, actually, that I've ever done. Unfortunately, so it did not go for it, but it was like one of the coolest. It was just cool. It was so. But, cool. Um, my favorite thing is always is to bother people. And Nick, the very first day I was like, oh, that's gonna be the person I bully. And it was great. So like, I was like, he would be trying to like go over his lines and stuff. And I'd be like, <laughs> wait a minute. It's not two bit, two, oh, two bit Walker. I kn I've known him since he was a kid. You could have shown him <laughs> Called Yoshimi Battles, the pink robots. You understand? <laughs> Come over here and tell them about the story. Oh my god! <laughs> and he would like he would have his like <laughs> he would have his stuff, and he'd be looking, and he'd be like, oh. <laughs> like <laughs> yes, Bobby, you know, just keep. <laughs> and like, why do people try to remain professional when you've clearly blown the cover? Like, you're like, we're not doing that anymore. But some people are like, <laughs> <laughs> we didn't even know each other that well at that point, and he was like, oh, it's still coming, great. Here's, I just want to be, I, I want to be clear. I want to give context for this. So Vasti at this point is, you know, uh, is a working professional, right? A Broadway star. She's been doing these shows. Yeah. I am, I am a child. Okay. I'm a child. This is my first, this isn't even, I'm not even on Broadway yet. This is La Jolla Playhouse. And I'm like, and for like, I, you know, I'm, I'm, this is my first like lead role, kind of lead role, whatever. And I'm doing this thing. I'm like, don't fuck this up. That's a one rule. Just don't mess this up. And like, so I'm just trying to work and everything and Fossey, Fossey's coming over. I was like, oh. yeah. <laughs> Two bit. But it was, but I will say what I love, what, what was so, I was actually talking to Sarah about this because we, uh, we went back to, to visit La Jolla uh, really briefly. And it, what I remembered about that was that was honestly, you, Jazz. Jazz. Uh, jazz, as much as I don't want to give him credit, Michael Balderrama. <laughs> Paul, you guys, you guys taught me how to have fun. I didn't know how to have oh. fun doing this yet, and oh. that was that was a huge part for me. Was yeah, learning those how. Are, to, those are yeah. people that love to have. I see, um, I see Kamiko quite a bit out here. Yep. 
Yeah, I, I it's literally. Just in my quarantine bubble. Oh, I please please send her my love. I have not because we we got lunch the last time in, I was in LA, but I that was I think that that was a year ago now. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> had to be. Had to be because of COVID. Uh, but yeah, man, y'all y'all I uh, y'all y'all really did me right. So I as much as two bit is not my favorite name, I appreciate you. <laughs> I think it's great. It's just oh, so God. funny. It's just like we're so old. Like, and it's it was like you were coming over a hill and I was on my rocking chair with my grandchildren. Remember, I was like surrounded by yep. yep. Like, why are you you're like, why am I visiting you in the country? <laughs> just, just you're like, you're like walking over yeah. the hill. Like, wait a minute. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you're so like good. in what scenario would that even like happen that's what's in so this great. in this scenario in right this scenario. <laughs> 10 years later right now um that's amazing though that's amazing so so i wanted to i want to talk i want to ask a little bit about that about about this joy that you have because you do right whether it's calling me two bit or just or your <laughs> show or whatever there is such a joy that you bring to everything you do, and, and one of the, you know, as this is Black History Month, Black History Year, Black History Time, as um, we're black, as we are black, <laughs> yes, as we, we are black always. Actually, we are black always. In fact, <laughs> one of the, one of the things that I wanted uh, that, that we we had talked about touching on was black joy, and and literally you were when we were thinking of guests to exemplify that you were top of our list, mm -hmm. and and it was uh, so we just I think we just wanted to ask you like like what. <laughs> Where does this joy come from for you? What you know, and especially, especially you, you know, your first generation, um, you're you're the child of, of of immigrants. So, like, what is this? Where where is this coming from? How do you continue to take this joy and share it with as many people as you do? It's very Haitian. Haitian people, I don't know how they do it because they live like the conditions that Haitian people live in are so crazy and they're so ignored. Like, it's so close to the United States, but everyone always goes to like Africa when Haiti is like right there. And actually the black people here have more lineage connection to the people in Haiti, but it's so, it's, the French did it perfectly. They said they would make them invisible and they did. But um, even despite all that, they have so much joy, like joy in eating and music and stuff. And my dad is actually like the happiest person that anyone has ever met. Like I was home, the last time I was home, I was like, I had a flight that left like at 5 a.m. and they live a little bit from the airport. And I'm walking down the stairs and it's like, one in the morning and I looked and I was like, and my dad was hiding. He was, I could see, cause he was hiding underneath the stairs. He was going, because he wanted to scare me and he's like 65 and it was like one in the morning. So it's just, that's, those are my parents. My dad does bits. My dad is the king of bits. Everything that he says is a bit. <laughs> <laughs> he's like really, really funny. He's so uh, funny, Molly. Um, um, but yeah, it, it comes from my parents. Like they, they never let us take ourselves too seriously um, as as much as hard work, as much hard work as they always instilled. They always had fun. We had fun as a family, always. Mm. Mm. Your dad is very fun. I, uh, fun. I've only spent a few, a few like opening nights or an opening night with him and like a few like <laughs> a dinner, I think that your parents cooked and he is, he's full of joy and I, it's, yes, it's, it's definitely reflects in you. He's like, oh, you're going to see Sasha, ask her about her back. And I was like, okay. Like, and then I forgot the last time you saw them, your back was hurting. The last time I saw you, <laughs> the last time I saw you, or saw them, yeah, because you had just gotten out of surgery. Yeah, like you were still recovering, and we were all at your place, and they had cooked a lot of food, and it was delicious. And then I started having a neck spasm that just that ended up taking me out of my show. I was doing My Fair Lady at the time. It took me out of the yeah. show for like three weeks, but it started that. like that night. I had had like, an, I had like had a kink in my neck for like a whole weekend. And then after a weekend of shows, I like sat down and it just like flooded down my back. I, ended, I left your apartment and ended up on my floor in my like apartment, and just like calling my sister. Like, and like, we, were both, and we were both just like laid out. We're like, we're in great condition. <laughs> Everything is going well for us right now. It's like so, so old, so done, just like so bodies healthy. breaking down. Like it's <laughs> fine. Down. But before I was having a great time with your parents and they had made a lot of really great food. Um, <laughs> food. I want to talk to you a little bit. You talked about the, um, like the hard work in your family and that sort of that being instilled or what they come, what comes out of that culture, I guess, of like 
why, you know, where does the story come from? And I think that's one of the themes that we've been talking about with Black Joy is just that like, it is actually born out of a lot of oppression, struggle and pain, and that it's sort of the survival thing. Um, another thing you've talked about is like sort of the need or the, the pressure or that we've been talking about the pressure to succeed or the stakes mm -hmm. of success sort of. Um, but I know for you, like, we're gonna to get to like some of the more educational things that you're doing now, but I love the way you talk about um, academics and traditional academics and like what your success in those things is. And I think you talk a lot about your parents' support through that, um, through your academics, because I don't think you really considered school a place where you were like succeeding <laughs> easily. <No. laughs> yes. I, I would not be a professor like our friends, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> professor of bits. I'm not a professor. <laughs> Professor of bits. Nope. Professor of bits. Nope. Yes. We're not we're not gonna explain why. What? <laughs> as, as a professor of bits, you want you want a job as a professor of bits. I'm like I'm a, yeah, I have a faculty meeting tonight. I'm gonna ask him about can we get a professor of bits? <laughs> they're like, what I'm noticing with the students is they're doing really well in the scene study classes. They're yeah, doing yeah, yeah. really well with the Shakespeare, but what they don't have enough are um, uh, bits. I would imagine <laughs> Did anybody talk bits? like Willy Wonka, you know, when he like limps and then rolls in. Yep. 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 <laughs> 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 This is the most chaotic show we've ever done. <laughs> right here. Yeah, that would be so much fun. If Chaos oh, had a twin, her name is Vasti. Um, uh, <laughs> so yeah, so like, what was what was growing up for you like in school and like, what oh, success meant for you? Oh, did you I go. go away? This first second. Um, I had I was like I loved school until about <clears throat> like the fourth or fifth grade when all of a sudden my brain went this way and like most people's brain went that way and I couldn't figure out what was going on. And so like the way that school is, if you're making bad grades, that means you're lazy or you're stupid or you have alert. There's so many different things that that, but it just, it starts negative. I've always just thought I was stupid because all of a sudden my grades started dropping and I would go to tutoring and I was, and the teachers would be like, I literally graduated high school because my teachers were like, Let's just, let's get her, let's get her moving so she can do something else. But I would get in trouble a lot with my grades. And then I remember uh, my, I was crying and I was like, I don't know what to do. And I had no, I have no learning disability or anything like that. And my parents were like, okay, let's just get, you have to graduate high school. So let's get you to graduate high school. And then we can go from there. But I thought I was dumb for, for like 90% of my life. And then I realized that it was just because I, I learned a completely different way. And there's so many kids that learn a different way to assume that every single human on the planet learns the exact same way, which is the way America, most American school systems are, is ridiculous. And so I think it's Albert Einstein, that whole thing if is like, everyone's a Judge genius, it. but if a fish judges its whole life on ability to climb a tree, it'll spend its whole life thinking it's insignificant. And that's basically what it was. Um, and I've always had a connection to kids and I understand how they learn but uh, but yeah, the books and like like trivia nights are like my worst nightmare. <laughs> I always act like I, I always act like I'm trying to figure it out if I'm on a team. I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> They're like, well, it can't be George Washington. I'm like, no, it can't be. So then, I, I <laughs> you're, you're literally just just contributing, so then... just contributing conjunctions. <laughs> but it's this, then, but... this. You have to like furl this and go, uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I do a lot of that. <laughs> and then it's wrong. You're like, oh my god, I could have sworn. Oh my god, god, I'm so sorry. Oh, I just totally blanked, but really, I didn't know at all. So weird. Or you're like, oh, you know what? I really thought I did think of that one. That was my next guess. That was my next guess. I knew it. I knew that. That's so true. when you talk about alternative le or like different learning differently, just mm -hmm. quickly, can you talk? Because this is you. You work in childcare. You have this entire program and and sort of uh, like show that you've created around programming for children but i know you started with babysitting and you were also babysitting a lot of children with autism mm -hmm. and that i know that's sort of like a special dynamic and takes sort of a special temperament but i also am curious about um what it maybe reaffirmed for you about people learning differently and how to measure intelligence yes. differently exactly yeah. it's it's working with a lot of it was working with a lot of kids with uh 
um, autism, mostly, I was mostly working with kids on the spectrum, some with Down yeah. syndrome, mostly kids with autism. And they're like, like, uh, the, you know, Natasha, I've been working, I worked with this girl for years and years and years and years and years. And she can't form a sentence, but she can put a puzzle together in five minutes mm -hmm. that would take me three or four hours. And so it's like, we, we just, we look at people and we're like, oh, that poor thing. They're not experiencing life the way they are. So they just must be so pathetic and sad, but it's like, no, we're the ones that are actually kind of pathetic mm -hmm. and sad because, you know, <laughs> like, it's just, you know, they, they have so limited. Yeah. Yeah. We think that there's one way to do something. And they were with me talking about this and uh, she, this, this girl that I used to take care of, she ended up getting a very <laughs> severe case of cancer about two years ago. And the doctors are like, this is going to be hard. And, it, and the fact that it happened to her is crazy because she's already severely, severely autistic. And there, it was going to be like years and years of a fight. And she beat cancer in like three months because she didn't know she had cancer. And to her, she was like, oh, I'm getting a lot of attention and everyone's paying attention to me. Great. And it made me think about the power of the mind. And wow. when you don't know something is like, you know what I mean? Like there's just, yeah. the brain is just so much more intricate than we give it credit yes. for. It's like, and if we like went that way, then so much, and you need the other way. You need the people who are book smart. You need the people who can go George Washington. I don't know any facts about George Washington. George Washington had a haircut like this. You know what I mean? <laughs> that's the most important fact about George Washington that people need to know is his hair. Yep, that's it. There it is. There it is. But, you, but, but Vasi, I love that so much because what, what that is telling me, right? I mean, you, you, exactly like you said, we have to meet these students where they're at, mm -hmm. not, not where we think they should be, not where the, the, you know, the zeitgeist is, but where they're at because that is the idea that, I mean, that's equity. That's literally equity, right? That idea of, of yeah, I know that you, you might be here and you might be here, but we're coming for both of you. Yeah, that's exactly. that's it's just such a powerful thing that you're talking about. It's just really so many classrooms are overcrowded and there's not enough time to give all the kids individual attention. The kids that need that can't afford sometimes to go to special schools. And um, like there's a lot of schools here, actually, like, you know, that people are learning outside and all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, that's so cool. Um, but that's hard to do everywhere, especially especially in underprivileged like neighborhoods. And it's yeah. like yeah. And, and also just considering like. I had a very, very easy childhood. I mean, it was hard, obviously, being black and like always school, but I ate every night. I knew where my food was going to come from. I got all the training I wanted. I had, I got everything I needed. But to have to like be in like ninth grade and worry about getting like kids that are being bullied or have problems at home or abuse at home or knowing that when they get home, they don't have food to eat and like all this stuff, no one even considers that part of education. Like the kids don't all come in just like, all right, everything's perfect, time to learn, you know? So it's, there's just so many layers of it, but we have to cheat kids like individuals instead of like, like, you know, hurdle cows, you know, herds. Yeah, 100%, 100%. Yeah. And that's, I mean, but that's, it, that's why it's so amazing that you're out there doing this work, you know, giving these students the confidence, giving these students, I mean, giving these, not even these students, giving these kids the confidence to just be in a, you know, if they're coming and hanging out with you on your program, that's an hour of them just being in a safe space where you are meeting them at that place. That, that does so much. And I, and I know you know that, but, but it's just so important, the work that you're doing. And, and I, I do, I do want to ask a little bit in kind of, kind of a pivot because, you know, how does that translate then <clears throat> to, to your Broadway career, right? You've had this, this incredible, incredible career in entertainment, um, you know, and, and, and especially, You've done this, which is already hard enough to do. You've done this as a black woman, <laughs> as a black woman. Do you know what I mean? So, like, so, so, how? I guess my question to you then becomes: How have you done this for yourself? How have you, in in chaos twins turns, secured your perimeter in your career, in your industry? How how have you maintained a confident and safe space for yourself in this industry that is anything but? I don't think I knew. I was. It's weird because. Being first generation, yes, my parents suffered a lot of racial stuff once they moved here, especially because they moved to the South and they're foreign. You know, there's it's like a double whammy. But like, I there's a there's a there's a difference between being first generation and then being like African American because 
the, this country, like as annoying and aggravating and all the stuff that it can be also saved my life. So mm. that has, that is always at the forefront of my brain that no one in my entire lineage and entire family has ever gotten to do anything coming close to what I've done, um, been able to do. And like, so it's not just like, oh, I'm living here. I'm doing this stuff. It's like, no, you're given a chance, a one out of a million chance of all the people that got a Haiti, of all my cousins that had to stay there and like the time that it took out of all the people in, in that entire country, like fate, God, universe picked me to come, like, you know, I got to come here and I got all these opportunities. And it's a curse and a blessing because sometimes I have to tell myself it's okay. It's like, you don't have to be like some sort of, you know, um, which I've learned the hard way and eventually <laughs> learned. But um, but that's always been my number one inspiration is that I'm supposed to, I'm the American dream technically like mm. that American dream is that you move here and that you 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 know my parents I'm their dream to come here and to have a kid that's educated and that can make her own money and all that stuff so like the other stuff is like you know I don't know so it's just been in that way it makes it easy mm -hmm. yeah. It's is there is there any pressure that you then have to balance out, right? Because that's that's I mean that's amazing. That's also a lot. That's a yeah. lot. For being, <laughs> how are you balancing that part of it as well? Um, I'm I'm that's something that I'm still learning, and I learn it every day because I'm a I'm like oh I'm a workaholic like a and not even like I'm more, like I'm an actual like textbook workaholic, um, which is why I've managed. I now I learn how to I'm like all right you stop working no more working for today. Mm -hmm. and uh choosing to say yes to things i want to do and like for instance i was like when i got asked to do this i was like i can bother nick i can laugh with sasha so yeah do you know what i mean <laughs> but like <laughs> and there are other things that i want to do but it's like nope i can't do that right now because you're already doing that and you have to take care of yourself so it's it's an everyday thing and then um it's funny my dad is like i'm 50 percent both my parents my dad is like as joyous as he is he's like a very calming energy and that's what my that's what Mason, my husband, is. So I'm just like, Wah! he's like, <laughs> like, sit down. We're gonna watch South Park or Drag Race, and it's gonna be fine. Yeah, it. yeah. yeah. So cool. But it's hard. It's hard. It's a. It's every. It's every single day. I deal with it every single day. Where I have to be like, nope, that's done. You're done. Yeah. So, you're done. so I wanna I wanna talk to you a little bit then about the spaces that like sort of what I've seen you like. We've known each other for uh, how many years? Like. A long time, but we did Rocky together in 2014, which is sort of, I guess, when we sat next to each other in a dressing room yeah. and just bothered each other every day yeah. for a year. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> we Christ. had a really good time in there. Okay. Uh, yeah, with Kristen Pirro. It was a, the three of us were like. <laughs> yeah. It was the best time because I will say it was also three women for three women who had to walk around um, a boxing ring in like swimsuits and and stilettos and carry like signs. Just the fact that like backstage, Piro would be shoving pizza in her face and like <laughs> making her or pasta. yeah. Pa from Daniela. From Daniela. I'm gonna get a pie. Does anybody want a slice? <laughs> they want a pie slice. <laughs> like just like shoving food in our faces like it was the most fun I've ever had with a group of women like we just had a great great group of people in there um but I've just sort of seen you I think like going from you know babysitting and childcare into um like basically growing into Fosti's friends but I also want to talk about your time on the prom on the set of the prom this uh past year that yeah. you you're kind of you know you've you bossed up a bit, like you've sort of just like bossed up. And I, what I recognize is, and we're talking about sort of the spaces that you're in, whether it was, you know, as a black woman in broad, on Broadway, or how do I, you know, I don't, I learn differently than the other students in my classroom. Like you just sort of find your, you find your space. And what's really thrilling to watch as someone who loves you dearly now is that you have you're creating your own space and your own stage and you're like taking charge of it. So you have a story about stepping on set with the prom and being like, is this what it feels like? And I really would love for you to tell that story. And then I would love, love, love for you to tell us about Bosti's friends. We really want to dig into that in your event coming up this weekend. But yes. first, the prom. Well, like, honestly, when, when like, and I know we all, under, like, we, it all affected us different ways. But one of the things that the whole, like, 
as soon as the whole George Floyd thing happened, I remember we were we were out of town and like um, so many things kept leading up to that. And then that happened and I was like, and so we were, Sasha and our friend Lauren were like meditating like almost every day. And we were meditating just to deal with the pandemic. And then this happened, we were like, oh dear God. And it's almost like we felt it, remember we kept saying that we felt a connection to our ancestors, all that stuff before it even happened. Yeah. Um, but when that happened, I was just like, it released like anything I'd ever held back and being like quiet and like, not quiet, but but being very like letting other people take the lead from being black, from being a woman, from being from the South, from growing up in a Christian household, from growing up in a Haitian household, from being in the ensemble, from being a dancer. There's so many things that we, wow. we just don't talk and we don't like step up. And I was looking at like, thinking a lot about black women and we were meditating every day and I was like, black women are amazing and we do so much. And I was thinking about Mammy and I was thinking about all this, all of that stuff. And I was like, it's, time it's time it's time it's time it's time and i was like and it's only going to start when we start like being like no no more of this we're not just the nurturers we're not just the the punchlines we're not just the vocabulary for for most people for pop culture we're not just the butt of everyone's it's just so much stuff and i was like we're boss ladies and i was like i'm i refuse to sit quiet anymore because like i'm getting old like this is there's not that much time left. I was like, I'm not spending the rest of my life being silent over people that dress up as squirrels and go to this, like to the White House, the, the Capitol. They looked ridiculous. I was like, this is what I've been basing my confidence on? These people? Yeah. I was like, what are we doing? Screw that. And so I felt very, and I felt like once I did that, I felt like things started to um, just change. And like, once you want that, I feel like some it just comes. And so, um, we wrapped the prom, but there was like one more scene to do, and they needed some. They needed a choreographer on set to do this, the staging of something. And um, I've been talking to Casey Nicola about inclusion and about. He was like, "Am I doing enough?" And I was like, mm, "You know, like all, like a lot of people." Go. I was like, "Well," and I was like, "It's not just making a cast diverse; it's making the creative team diverse; it's making the producer blah blah." blah. And so that conversation went, worked to my advantage because when they needed someone, he sent, he was like, do you want to do it? And I was like, absolutely. And so I was on set and I couldn't prepare the night before because they were like, he, Ryan Murphy likes everything done on the spot. So there was nothing I could prepare for. And I was like sweating. And then they were like, he was like, all right, Vasti, you have the floor for 20 minutes. And there was an entire set of people. I was the only woman of color on set besides Ariana. I was the only person, woman in power on set. And I was like, oh my God. And then I started talking and everyone was silent and everyone was looking at me. And I was like, is this what white men feel like? Is this what they feel like? Because if this is what they feel like, I don't blame the way they've been acting. I was drunk with power. I was like, wow, this is fantastic. <laughs> You're like, you over there. And they ran. You go, oh. <laughs> I was like, this is crazy. I was like, if th this is what straight white men feel like that have power. No, I'm not saying every straight woman, because I, I know like poor white people are a whole other thing that are also ignored in this country. But I'm talking about powerful straight yeah. white men. I was like, I do, I, I, why would they ever? And then I started making me think of the the image of God is a white straight man, all the kings, the presidents. So you have all that mixed up with that attention. Of course, they're the way they are. Yeah, Like yeah. a lot of them are the way they are. But I loved it. And I was like, this is amazing. And I was like, I love this. And once you have that confidence, I don't know, it, it kind of clicks something for me. And I was like, I like being behind, the, I like being in front of the camera, but I really like being behind the camera too. Mm. And like- So how does that, what kind of space like does that inform? I like to think a lot about the kinds of spaces that black women create when they are in that position and when they do have that power because it comes out of an experience of knowing what it's like to be on the other side, right? Like mm -hmm. if you've been on the other side of it, then hopefully, you know, you're not gonna just recreate environments that don't have a lot of space for you. I'd love mm -hmm. to talk about Fosti's friends. And I think it's it's not just the way that you're working with the artists, but in the way that you're working with the kids, it's all reflective of like this sort of, I think, inclusion and just, holding everybody in high regard and making enough room for everyone to just be themselves and be the best of themselves. Um, so I'd love for you to share about Vasti's friends and what you have coming up and just what's most important to you about that space. Yeah, it, you know, it's funny. It was my wedding. My wedding uh, that uh, was so crazy. And like, I had all my family from here and I was really nervous actually, because I was like, 
okay, this is like a whole bunch of Haitian people, which a whole bunch of like crazy artists. And then there's Mason's family. I was like, I hope I was like anxious about it for some reason. But um, what every single family member, my Haitian family said was like, wow, your friends are incredible. You have, and I was like, and I always knew my friends were great, but I was like, oh, they are. And then I'd gotten sick a few years ago. And with my poor health, the way that everybody just like came and was just like, like lifted me up. I was like, I have amazing, I have amazing people in my life. Um, and I didn't really, that's very rare to have that many amazing people in your life that are not just amazing, but are supportive and that are talented and that are also kind of like weird um, <laughs> in like a really, <laughs> in a really good way. Um, and so when we started this, we started doing this, I was like, it just, it was so easy to be like, oh, that person would be good. That person would be good. Like both of you have been on there. I was like, that person would be good. Like, and it's not even, it's never, we, we've never made like a wrong choice. And it's about, everyone comes from such an authentic place. Like nobody was on there being like, all right, so I'm going to teach this and we'll do this. Everyone's like, like everyone has their own style of the way they do things. Um, Nick did something where he read from Charlotte's Web and a lot of the autistic kids apparently like just kind of like did this because of his voice and he was just being himself. When Sasha does stuff, she comes on and she like, like we did a voting episode. She's like, okay, so you dance and you put the ballot and you fill the ballot in and you look at it. And the kids are like doing all this stuff. <laughs> so to, see, to see like, it's almost, it, what turned into something that was supposed to be just to distract kids during the pandemic, turned into almost like a kid's show of activism and like yeah. um, them getting to see people reflected such a rainbow of color, diversity and all of this stuff is just so cool to watch. And like, I get emotional every time I watch, cause I just watch my friends do stuff and I'm like, gosh, they're good. And Mason and I are always like, they're so good. Um, and that's been the most special part. And like seeing these kids and the parents write to us and being like, you know, like my niece is obsessed with Sasha because, and my my sister-in-law thinks it's because they look alike. And I'll just say like, they do. Like my niece looks like Sasha as a kid, but she just loves her. Like, she loves Sasha. She talks about her all the time. <laughs> So <laughs> um, she's three, like it's not, but it's, um, yeah, it's just, it's incredible. And it's like, what happens when you give all the artists a voice um, to make something together instead of being like, so stand here and you're going to sing this at starting at this bar. And then you're going to finish at this bar and you're going to hold your breath here. And there's nothing wrong with that. I love musical theater for that. But sometimes it can be a little handcuffy because you're caught in a box of how high you can kick, how fast you can turn, how high you can sing, standing on this spot, um, which makes really good theater. But also sometimes it can make it a little hard to express yourself freely as an artist. And so to watch my friends, my theater friends get to do that is just so incredible. Yeah. Um, I just love it so much. It makes me so happy. Well, you've got your Black to the Future event coming up. Yeah. this. That Sasha's in Saturday that I'm doing. You're like, <laughs> I'll be teaching. I'm like, it's. Uh, let me look at my calendar. But yeah, this weekend, if people want information, we've been flashing your website up on our new fancy ticker. Uh, mm -hmm. Brittany's been putting up the info. If you have young kids, what are the ages? Like, uh, what's the best age? They we always have an age range, but they, but they come. It's like it's like honestly, babies to like ten, really. Yeah. Um, and we always like with age suggestions with kids, it's always important to remember autism and special needs and and learning. So it's like that's the suggest that's the that's the age level that would be interested. But like mm. if it's like a 20 year someone that's 20 and, and is on the spectrum, they would enjoy it, too. Yeah. Um, so it's so it's um, yeah. Yeah. That's so me. I mean, again, you're just you are doing such incredible work, um, and it is it is amazing to see you out there. It's also just amazing to see just just you as a black woman being out there and and kicking ass in the way that you are. I mean, that's just that is that's that's the hope of of, of 2021. So I mean, keep doing it. We we want to close out. You know, so the way we close out the show always are the James. I'm I'm just gonna start calling them the James Lipton Ten. Is that is that appropriate? I like it. The Lipton Ten. The Lipton Ten, because I think that's what they are. The, the questions yeah. that, that James Lipton asked at the inside the actor studio. Uh, obviously, James has passed, but we we want to carry on that tradition here. At oh my God, I love that show. I feel so cool that I get to oh, yeah. do it. That's that was the point. It was like everybody who like would eventually have been on that show. We get them on the show and we ask them the questions so they can have that. That's what we want. The Dave Chappelle episode is the best one, right? It's, it's, <laughs> If you haven't watched Dave Chappelle and James Lipton 
please watch that episode. It's, I, it's, watch it's, that. I haven't watched that. Oh, it's one it's, of the best things that's ever interviewed ever. that has ever happened on TV. Ever. It's it's literally it's literally one of the best interviews ever mm -hmm. in all of history. Um, but now it is your turn, Vasti. It's your turn for the for the Lipton Ten. So, okay. Vasti, here we go. Okay. Vasti, what is your favorite word? Um, uh, fabulous. It's not. That's not right. But that's what I just came up with. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's fantastic. I say fantastic a lot. I love that. What is your least favorite word? Um, actually, in that tone, when people say that. <laughs> like, so the actually? Actually? Oof, oof. My, my wife would be triggered by that. There's a whole story. <laughs> thing <is later>. yeah. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. <laughs> Vasti, what turns you on? The desert and fun things that I won't mention at this very moment. <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> what turns you off? Um, people that don't listen to me. Mm. <laughs> you're real, you're real. What sound or noise do you love? Um, this, this, <laughs> the sound of chalk being ch chewed. The sound, I, it's weird. The sound of crumbling chalk or rock. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, that's fun. What sound or noise do you hate? <laughs> it's like my, I'm like, oh, I like can't. Yeah. The sound of chewing with the sound of chewing. Mm, mm. Ugh. <laughs> what? Is Unless your... it's chalk. Unless it's chalk. Oh, I love the sound of that. Good lord. YouTube, what? YouTube people eating chalk is <laughs> sick. Okay, <laughs> keep going. Oh god, what is your favorite? <laughs> what is your favorite curse word? I don't, I, I still am traumatized from my parents that I don't really cuss so much, but I guess it would be shit. Nice, nice. What profession- I'm like, Mom, Dad, did you hear that? Even when I said that, I was like- Shit, shit, shit. <laughs> <laughs> what profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Um, world travel. Mm. Mm. <laughs> like, a food docu like a food documentary person. <laughs> no, that's, Anthony Bourdain has my dream Yeah, job. fair. Yeah, Fair. yeah, mm. yeah. Love what, that, just to eat all over the world. Oh yeah, what profession other than your own would you least like to attempt? Um, being a, a math teacher. Mm. That's a popular one, We that's that's when we get a lot. People people don't want to teach math. People don't well, want to teach- Why fired, first of all? They like, <laughs> don't know what, what are you doing? That's not math. You don't know math, you don't know math. You don't know math. Two, three, four, five. <laughs> I hate that. Like, you <laughs> never need to count above eight, guys. Five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> I hate that so much. I can't tell you. I hate that. Uh, uh, and finally, if heaven is real, what would you like to hear God say when you enter the pearly gates? Ah, uh, you did it. Just relax now. <laughs> That's a great one. I like one. that exhale. Yeah. Uh, like, oh, my gosh. You did it. Right, oh, casual. That is so casual. You I love it. it. Just beautiful. Oh, well, yeah. well Vasi, <laughs> you are such a gem and such a pleasure. We are so thankful to have had you on the Chaos Twins. You got to come back anytime you want. Yes, and, and please, yeah. And please, please go check out Vasi's Vasi's event screen. Please go check out Vasi's friends. Um, you know, on the Broadway podcast. On the Broad on the Broadway podcast network. Yes. That's word that yes we are we we share that family <laughs> share that family uh, guys so we will be back not next Wednesday but the Wednesday after every other Wednesday so we will see you next episode on March 10th at 4 p.m. on the Chaos Twins thank yes. you guys so much thank you bye.